All right, so let's take a look at the rig. Um, a lot of it's going to be pretty uh, familiar to you. Uh, it's in line with a lot of um, normal biped rigs. By default, uh, the limbs and the spine are in IK. So um, the leg is actually a no-flip IK setup, whereas the arm is a normal pull vector setup. So if we do that and move the pull vector, uh, the behavior is what we'd expect. For the leg, you actually do not have a pull vector control, and it's set up to be a no-flip leg. So you get a very huge range of motion without having to manage another control. Um, if you do want to deal with the leg twist, it's actually an attribute on this foot control. So if I select the foot control in the uh, channel box, I can see knee twist. I can also control middle mouse drag in the picker and drive it that way. Um, while we're on the legs, I'll talk about the hips. So if you select the inner hip control, this is the body control on the outside. That moves the entire upper body. The hip control will just move the hips. Now because we have squash and stretch turned off on the spine, it is bringing the spine down, but you'll notice the controls are staying up. On the hip control, we can turn on auto hips. Now if we turn on auto hips, what that's going to do is as we move our legs, the hips are going to orient themselves to be balanced between the leg positions. So as I move this, you can see that our uh, auto hips are behaving in a way that our normal hips would in real life. We also have an auto spine setting on the spine control. So we can turn auto spine on and we can set a value on the rotation influence. Uh, I usually default to something about 0.25, it's a zero to one. And what this means is it's going to automate our middle spine control. So as we move this, the middle spine is moving as well. As we rotate this, that 0.25 rotation influence is calculating into that middle spine controls translation. So I know the animators at work tend to like this because it just speeds up their workflow and it gets them pretty close to the pose that they are wanting to achieve anyway. Used in conjunction with auto hips, you can have a pretty powerful automated system. Uh, while we're talking about automation, the last part that we have is the auto shoulders. So with auto shoulders on, as I move my my wrist, you can see that my clavicles are aiming towards my elbow and raising automatically. Um, I've always found that shoulders seem to be something that get neglected a lot um, in animation. And so this is there to kind of help you uh, make sure that you can get some nice natural shoulder animation um, automatically. I will say that there are a lot of settings on this rig. There are a lot of options, and in some of the future videos, uh, I'll go over some of the more advanced stuff. But definitely click around on some of these controls and look at the attributes that are there, and you'll see things like on the head, we've got orientation settings. So if we set that to world, and we were to select the spine, we get what you would expect. The limbs also have squash and stretch, as does the spine. So let me select the spine and set stretch to one. Now, if I just do stretch, um, the way this is uh, rigidly weighted clearly doesn't uh, work as well for this character, but you get the idea. If I just do stretch, what it gives me is just a translational stretching of the joints. If I actually add squash, I'll also get nonlinear scale, which means that as I collapse, I'm thickening and thinning that spine. Um, same with the arms and the legs. So if I turn on squash and stretch, and I stretch, you can see what's happening there. So we're actually getting some scale as well. Um, the IK hand control has a few unique uh, attributes. And to properly use them, we want to turn on some attributes on our fingers. So on our fingers down here in the picker, um, these green buttons will select a row or a column. So I can select this row of base knuckle joints and turn sticky to one. And what this will do is when I do side to side, it will keep my fingers oriented towards 
their initial position, as you can see there. And the thumb sticky is not on one, so you, what you could see what it was doing is it was rotating with the hand controls. Now that it's set to one, you can see what we get. Um, mid bend, so for this to best work, you want to have room for your arm to extend. So mid bend gives you that ability. Now if you had sticky off, these fingers would go straight down. So this allows you to push up and off of things, uh, swivel both from the tip or the mid. Um, and so like I said, there's lots of attributes on all the controls, so definitely just click through and, and check them out. In terms of getting to our FK controls, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, you can go over to the Rig Settings tab and go to the specified body part that you're looking for and click on FK mode. All of the settings for everything in the rig is located in this tab. But a much faster way to work is just to actually go into the picker and right click on the, any of the arm buttons, for example, and choose arm FK mode. Now we're in FK mode and that works exactly like you'd expect. Now by default, FK and IK, when you match through the UI, will match uh, poses. So if I were to switch back to IK now, it's already matched my pose. If you do not want that behavior, you can actually go up to settings and turn off match on switch. If I turn match on switch off and I were to move my IK and I go back to FK, you'll see I, I'm not matching anymore. So by default, that setting is turned on and you can feel free to turn it off to get the behavior you want. Uh, this goes for switching on all of the body parts. So and if you want to switch the spine, just click on any spine bone in the picker and you can switch to the FK or IK mode and same for the legs. Any leg bone in the picker will switch you as well. Let's talk about the master and the offset controls. So down here in the bottom, we have our master. This is our entire rig master. And then we have the offset. Now the offset is essentially the same thing as the master except it's just a child and what it allows us to do, especially for game animation that's really important, is if an animator wants to animate a walk cycle and they animate this guy walking in space, um, usually what we need to do is have him walking in place. So what they can do is as this guy is walking in space, they then take the translation data from his body and counter that on the offset so that he'll end up walking directly in the center. And then we also have a root animation bone. Um, this is for, you know, if you're doing a root motion type animations for your game or anything like that, sometimes you have to animate the root, which the physics capsule attaches to, um, to go over cover, do whatever you need to do. So that's what that's there for. And that's pretty much the, the quick uh, rundown of the rig. Oh, I did forget the fingers actually also have FK and IK, um, not just the limbs. So in fingers, we can go here um, and then we can also, so that's just basic FK control. We can also just right click on any of the finger bones to go to IK. That was on the right hand. So let me, and now when IK, you get uh, what you'd expect. And on the IK control, there's an attribute for the pole vector visibility. You can turn that on and now you can actually animate that if you needed to as well. Although the default motion that you're gonna get is pretty accurate to what you'd want. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that. And then this square control here is specifically for the IK controls. So this is kind of like the IK ground plane. If you went ahead and you turned on IK for all of your fingers, and you were to grab this control, you'll see that it will just grab them all. This is really useful if you need to do a push on the ground or something like that. In the next video, we'll go over the uh, UI in more detail and then we'll start digging into the tools. Thanks.